Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for the real day 26. Um, I finally got my numbers put together. So um, my mat's at a little bit of an angle because we are going to be using the bands again, um, but from the floor. So um, I kind of set up a little bit of uh, an angle. I put my band way back on my the leg <laughs> farthest away from me. Um, and then tried to build some space for my arm and leg because we're going to be doing some bird dog um, with the band and some dead bug with the band. Um, that'll come up eventually. We're going to start with some planks, lots of core today, and um, I'm taking the opportunity to go barefoot, just kind of let my feet have some space, nothing too crazy um, going on. We're also going to be doing an asymmetric um press so i'm going to use my kettlebell for that i'm going to start with my um 25 and a bit pound kettlebell so after we get through our planks we'll be doing a single arm press so asymmetrics is whenever you're getting just um one side weighted and you kind of have to use that core a little bit more to hold support so we'll go up into our glute bridge Hold there, and then we're just going to drop and press through the one side, 10 each side. Once we have all of that, we are going to go, I'm going to use a 12-pound weight, I think, and we're going to do an overhead reach with a single leg pull. So I'm going to be putting my legs back up into that glute bridge, but if you want to keep your hips on the ground, you're more than welcome to. So again, we're in an asymmetric hold. So you'd push your hips up nice and high, get into that solid glute bridge. And then from there, you're going to want to lift left leg up. You're going to reach the right arm back straight. And then you're going to pull leg and arm together. Your palm is facing in. And you're just going to pull arm and leg toward one another. Using the core, using the back, shoulder, chest. So we'll go 10 each side there. From there... We are going to move into our banded. Oh, wait, nope, we got some more core stuff from the ground. Sorry. We're going to go into a figure four crunch. So if your right leg is crossed over your left knee, take your left elbow and reach it up toward that knee. Ten crunches. You'll be feeling more into that right side oblique each side. Then you're going to go back to that figure four, and we're going to do a reverse crunch here. You're pushing pressure from that folded over leg into the leg that's in front of you. I'm gonna tuck and see if you can get that booty up off the ground. 10 on this side, 10 on the other. Then we move into our banded set. If you don't have a band, don't worry about it. You can either use lightweight or um, you can just go body weight like we've done for a long time. Okay, so you'll need to get pretty good space from your anchor point because you want to start with the band in tension when your arm is straight. Not like a ton of tension, but you don't want slack in your band when the arm is straight out. So find that position, then you're going to plant onto, so my arm, right arm's holding the band, left hand on the ground, and then your left leg is going to be going behind, just like you hit up with your normal bird dog, opposite arm and leg. Then you're going to pull that elbow to the knee, extend, and pull. So I'm a little bit close. Figure out where that point is going to be. Extend and then tuck. Extend and tuck. So we'll go 10 on one side, 10 on the other. Then we're going to lie down with our head facing our anchor point. Okay. Same thing. You're going to want that arm on some tension whenever it's straight behind, right? So here, lift both legs, super strong core, smack that low back into the ground. So when your arm is back, that right arm back, your left leg will be forward, and then you're gonna pull arm and leg toward one another. <sighs> Glad I started with the light band. <laughs> this is gonna add up. Okay. That's that. We're going to pop up for just a quick little burst. Um, if you would prefer to take a downward facing dog and stay kind of settled today, that's fine. I know a lot of us like little bursts, so we're going to do just 10 gate swings. Okay, 
So there we are. That's what we've got coming at us. And let's go ahead and start with a teeny bit of a warm up. Start at the back of your mat and take your feet and place them at mat width. Go ahead and hinge over those legs. Bend into your right knee. Let your hips drop to the right. Bend into your left knee. Let your hips drop to the left. Then come to settle. Plant your hand if you can on the ground. Otherwise, grab something to bring the floor up to you. Or you can just dangle in space. And you're going to twist. Twist your right arm up. Keep your hips level. Twist the left arm up. And you're rotating through that mid spine. We've been working on getting some more movement through the thoracic spine. Oh, hopefully you're noticing that. Rotate. I definitely feel more tight and restriction on that left side. One more time each side. All right. Get rid of your floor raise if you used it. Hinge over those legs, and we're going to just walk out nice and easy. Plant those hands, walk out slow, and then finish up with your downward facing dog. Push into your thumb and first finger. Drop your right heel to the ground and let your left knee bend. Check in, make sure you're not holding tension in the neck, but everything's pushing into the back. And you're rotating your elbows back toward your toes, hollowing out those armpits. Shift again, drive your right heel toward the ground, grab through that belly, and then push your left heel toward the ground. Okay, level off your feet. One more big push, that down dog. Then grab through the core, and you're slowly going to draw your chest through your arms. Elbows pinch in tight. Open the chest. Sink those hips. If you'd like to curl your toes under, go for it. Open that chest. Just pull the chin back. Squeeze the glutes so you protect your low back. Open your knees. Drop wide and back. Okay, we're going to go straight into our planks. If you do not plank, I'm going to have you hit a cat-cow first. Okay, so when we're on our front plank, open the chest and then round. You're going to hit your cat-cow there. When we go into a side plank, try putting one hand on the ground and then the same knee on that same side and lift up from there. If that doesn't work, I'm going to have you go ahead and come all the way onto your knees and just hold a hinge. So you're gonna hinge, contract through that oblique, and then bring it up. Hinge, and bring it up, okay? So for the same amount of time that we're working, if we're on the side, you'll hinge on that side and the other side. Okay, all that done. We're gonna hit a one minute front plank to start. Ready, set, and go. Set those forearms on the ground. Make sure that your shoulder heads are just in front of your elbow crease. Push into the elbows and then pull the elbows back toward your toes. Tuck in that tailbone. Try to flex around your glutes. Keep thinking about pulling the front of the belly up, tacking it up toward the spinal column. You're kind of doming a bit, feel a little lift into that upper back, but then try to lengthen through the back. Keep pressing the backs of the heels or the heels back away from you. We have 20 seconds left in the front. Then we're going to start into our first side plank. We're going to hold 30 second sides, but we're going to go back and forth three times. Push into elbows. Pull those elbows back. Make sure your butt's not rising. Find the flex into the belly. Okay, turn to that first side or whatever alternate that you needed. Lift up high through those hips. Try maybe taking your top hand, pushing it into your low back to help open the chest. 15 seconds left. Should kind of start building the heat here now. Yes, in the core, but overall body temperature. Start building that heat. Feel like you're going to sweat soon. Three, two, rotate over to the other side. Lift that hand and then tuck it behind. Open up through that chest. Feel the oblique pushing you up. You're driving your hip as far away from the floor as possible. And then pushing that hand behind will help open the chest. Stack the shoulders. Stack your hips. Four, three, two, first side. Here's our second set. 
Go back to that first side. Lift up nice and tall. Tuck the hand behind. Open the chest. If you feel like your hips start sagging, try inching your feet toward your elbow a little more. That'll help create that lift. 10 seconds left. Front of the belly holds strong. Then you're pushing through that oblique. Three, two, and one. Rotate over. Second side. Second set. Stack those shoulders. Open the chest. Scan the body, notice what you're feeling. Five, four, three, two, back to your first side. Again, make sure that you're kind of high in the middle. Those feet are coming tight toward your elbow. Tuck that arm behind if you'd like. Push the hips forward. Get that stack at the same time. You're opening the chest. Seven seconds. Three, two, second side. Ugh. Tuck it over. Nice and strong. Get that height. Flex through the thighs. Grab through the belly. Push the hips forward and then drive them up. Five, four, three, two, back to center. We're gonna hold one more minute in the center. And then we'll end up with a five minute plank round. It's a good start. Check in with that core. Wake it up. If you need a break, take it. Do not lose your form. Keep flexion through the belly. Make sure your butt's not lifting. See if you can pull that front of the abdomen up away from the ground anymore. We're over halfway. Find the biggest effort to get there. So don't back off your effort. You need to keep it tough. 10 seconds to go. Three, two, and one. All right, good work. Drop onto those knees, hinge back, arms re reach way out in front of you. Okay, we're gonna gear up for our first asymmetric press. <clears throat> so try to find something a little bit heavy that's gonna throw you off balance. It's kind of the goal. You also have to work through that core and back more. So that's how our core and back work is getting going today. All right. If you're using your kettlebell, just hinge or put that bell back on your forearm. Strong wrist. Drive up nice and high through those hips. I'm going to let my other arm that's not doing anything hang out. Drop your elbow kind of at an angle, so not straight out, but not tight in either. Two. Three, you got it. Four, keep good form with that glute bridge. As always, if your weight's a little lighter, you're gonna go faster. So just get more reps. Unless you're at your max at 10 and wanna enjoy a little break, then of course it's fine. And 10. Whew. All right, easy does it. I'm gonna try to see if I can keep my hips up. Oh, shift this guy. All right. Here we go. Set up for that other side. Keep that glute bridge. And then you kind of split the difference with that elbow. Not straight out, but not super tight. Three. Four. Seven, keep that body square to the ground. You got a 
flex through the core to keep that stability. Can't remember if that's nine or 10. Here's 10. Rah! All right, set that guy down unless you can hold on to it and use it for your extensions. Okay, so make sure you have your solid glute bridge. Lift that left leg. I'm going to keep it extended long toward the ground. Right arm behind. Then you're going to lift opposite arm and leg. See if you can attach the knee to the weight. Four. Get the back engaged. You got it. Here's eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, you feel that shoulder, you feel the back, your butt's on fire, but don't forget the core. So extend right leg and left arm. One. Flex the right foot. Make the back do the work. Four. Last time we did this one, I heard some comments back that it hurt their collarbone, front of the shoulder. So that means that you're using too much of the front of the body. You have to incorporate that roll back of the shoulder to get into the back. Slide the shoulder head down the back. And then if that's a struggle, lower your weight or even go body weight. One more. Perfect. Okay, we get to drop the hips. Cross right ankle over your left knee. Take your left elbow out away from you, and then you're going to crunch that elbow to the knee. You don't need to come all the way up. Of course you can, but it's more like a concentrated crunch. We're flexing in, and then you don't relax. So my right side, oblique and transverse, is lighting up. Stay contracted as you lower. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, cross the other direction. That chin's going to stay tucked in, right? And your hand's just there to rest the head and to give a target for that elbow to knee. Two, three. Four, focus on where you're grabbing from. Five. Six. Seven. And ten. Okay, cross the other leg over. And we're going to do that reverse crunch. Crossing the knee, flex both feet. So you're pushing that right leg actively into the other two. See how high you can get your hips up off the ground. Four, five, six. Trying to find that low portion of the belly. Nine. 10, switch to the other side. All right, here we go, crunch it in, roll it up. One, two, get that scoop through the belly. Four, remember, don't just get the work done. Think about how you're getting it done. What are you using to get where you're going? Nine, ten. Whew, those are lit up. Okay, now we're going to move to that band set. If you have a band, I'm going to start with my left arm holding the band, right leg extending back. See, I'm going to go at a little bit of an angle. Just enough tension. 
but you want to make sure that you can get that full, full reach, get your anchor point set up, and then tuck. One, two, three, four. You've got to keep your hips as level as possible. Six, seven, shoulder up over that wrist. Try not to lean away from it. And 10. Okay, other side. Find those firm acre points. So I find too, once I get set with my shoulder up over the wrist, I don't have as much tension on the band. So make sure you have enough right arm on the band, left leg behind. I also noticed I started leaning back away from my anchor point. So keep that supporting shoulder over the wrist. Belly strong. And this is what I mean when I say envision you have a big rubber band around your arm and you're creating tension. Okay, there's 10. Now we'll flip it over. Hit those dead bugs. Same idea. Find your point. These ones were much more difficult. I noticed, okay, push that low back into the ground. So your right arm's back, left leg extended, and then pull. One side at a time, two. Flex into that core, three. Push the low back into the ground. Slide your shoulder blade down the back. Try to use the back and the core to move the band, not your shoulder. Check in, low back, push into the ground, nine. Ten. Ooh, okay, other side. Left hand on your band. Low back into the ground. Let's see. Right leg extends and then pull. One. Two. Three. Find yourself flexions. Two to go. Side that shoulder blade down. <clears throat> Ten. Whew. Okay. Flipping it over or around, I guess. We're going back to our asymmetric press. Just say that direction. <sighs> okay. Lie on the ground. Push up into your. Oh, shoot. My brain is not on target. We have to get our um, gate swings. Don't want to forget those. If you want to just stretch that down dog, that's fine. Just 10. Drop your hips, not your chest. There we go. I think there was something I was missing. Okay. Now we'll get those asymmetric presses. Okay, bring it down. Push up into your glute bridge. I'm going to start on my opposite side this time that I did last time. All right, get that glute bridge set. Flex into the back. Flex into the core. Here we go. One. Two. 
six, stability through the back and the core. Then the work comes through shoulder and chest. Nine, 10. All right. Other arm. Get your set. One. Keep that glute bridge going strong. Six. Seven. Nine. Okay, moving on to our single arm and leg extensions. So we we'll start left arm holding the weight, right leg long. Here we go. One, two, flex your foot, point it straight up, straight strong arm. Five, check in with those glutes and the core. Make sure you have a solid foundation, counterbalance of flexion and pull support there. Three to go. Eight, nine, 10. Second side, reach back, one. Again, set into the back. So super deep core foundation trunk work. Sometimes it's not as fun. I've actually been really enjoying it. I can feel the strength and efforts help me and support me other places, not just in other workouts, but in the real life activities that we enjoy doing day to day, whatever those might be. <sighs> Dig into it, don't just count out the numbers. And 10. <sighs> All right, figure fours. Start with the crunch. I'm gonna go right leg over left, left elbow reaches up. Make sure to get that twist. Never relax the core. Eight. Nine. Ten. Whew, that heats up. It's easy to back off it. It's easy to just get with the crunch, that twist. Flex in, make it difficult. Seven. Eight. Ten. All right, well, we'll go into that reverse crunch so you can stay where you're at if you'd like. Tuck it up tight. Two. Three. Four. Five. Push that foot into your opposite knee. Increase the work. Nine. Ten. Other side. Two, three. See if you can really isolate that low portion. That's your initial grab as you pull the legs into the chest. Nine. 10. Oh, okay. Flip it over. We're back into our band. <sighs> Eight. 
bird dog. Get your set up. Hand over the wrist. Other leg extends back. Here we go. Five, scan the body, find those flexions, six. Control the return, eight, that's it, nine, ten. Okay, other side. One, shoulder over that wrist. Six, you're flexi flexing through the back side of the body as you get the extension. Nine. Front of the body as you get the tuck. <laughs> okay, back into our dead bugs on your back. Have our dead bugs, gate swings, and then we're there. Push low back into the ground, extend your left leg, and then bring your right arm in. Two, three, low back slides into the ground. Four, keep it connected. Five, six, four, focus here. Seven, maybe you're feeling a little back, a little tricep, but focus the core. Ten. Okay, other side. Left arm, right leg. Check in, where's the low back? Needs to stay on the ground. Flex through that core. Eight. Your other arm and leg that aren't doing anything are also flexed. Ten. Oh, barely made it. Okay, here we go. In and out. Drop deep. Go quick. Four. Five. Knees line with toes. Perfect. Whew. Okay, on your mat, on your back. Lie down flat. Cross your right ankle over your left knee again. Arms out in a T. Lower your legs to the left. We're going to stretch through that back and the core. I definitely feel mine. That knee pushing away toward your heel. <clears throat> you can move your arm around just so that you get a better flex. Or I'm sorry, stretch wherever you want it. <sighs> All right, roll to center. Quick figure four stretch. Flex both feet. Apologies, it's gonna be a quick stretch today. Okay, right foot on the ground. Left foot crosses over. Find that twist. Same thing if you wanna reach that left arm back a little. Get a little more stretch in through the front of the belly. Pull the legs back to center. Interlace hands behind that right knee. 
pull deep into the chest. Your left elbow pushes into the left knee. Make sure that your hips are squared off. Okay, and then roll it up and we'll get our wide squat, our yogi squat, wherever you're at with this. See how I can do sometimes. You can tell how much heels your shoes have because <laughs> they help you sit. Not super narrow for me today. That's okay. Push those knees out, elbows into knees, open the chest. Fantastic work. Thank you all again for joining me as always. Trying new things, pushing the body in new ways, building strength and mobility, ability of the body coming to your forward fold. Let the head hang long or hang heavy over those legs, hinge forward into the balls of your feet a little bit more. All right, come on up, arms reach, and then hinge back just a little bit. Those core muscles stretch a teeny bit more. Okay, I will see you tomorrow. Fantastic work.